Hi, everyone. Um, I am Miranda Hill, and I am the Global Sustainability Lead at Avanade. We are a joint venture of Microsoft and Accenture, and I am happy to be here at the Women in Cloud Annual Summit. Thanks so much for, for having me. So most of my career has been spent in the innovation space. Um, I have been an innovation leader for several years, too many to count actually. And the, the role that I've played over this time has really been about looking up and looking out and really working with companies to ask the question, what if and what's next on your digital transformation journey? And that's been great. Um, but the mantra that I've always worked with all this time is to always ask the question, or rather um, to, to focus on not innovation for innovation's sake, but innovation with a purpose. And so when there was an opportunity uh, by my organization to explore innovation and sustainability together, I raised my hand. Because when you look out at the macro environment that's out there, right, there is a heck of a lot going on. And when we talk about that's happening out there, it's not out there in terms of another continent or another country or even another state. This stuff that you see here on this screen is actually happening in our backyard, in our own neighborhoods and in our community. So I'm lucky to work for a company that recognizes that and really wants to do something about that. And the great news is that our parents, Microsoft and Accenture, are already doing amazing things in the space of responsible business and in the space of, of sustainability. So one of the things that we had to do as a first step in the process was really ask the question, what does being a responsible business mean to us as an organization? So we worked with a core team of people, including our CEO, and said, of course, we want to be you know, transparent with our, our operations and our business. We want to be forward looking. We, we know that the decisions that we make today will have an impact, um, ripple effects, in fact, on the future. Um, we want to really be um, forward looking from a leadership perspective and focus on inclusion and diversity. A lot of the things that you would hear other organizations say, but we really need to, needed to figure out what that meant for us. And more importantly, how we were gonna actually measure that, um, that goal, if you will. So that led to the development of our first ESG scorecard about two years ago, I would say. And here's just a snapshot high level overview of the different elements of that scorecard that we developed. But then the real work actually started after we developed that scorecard, because there's an elephant in the room out there with respect to ESGs. Um, and that's the statistic that you see here, actually. Only 93% of organizations worldwide um, are struggling with their sustainability goals. That's a huge amount of um, companies out there that have established these scorecards, put them prominently on their .com, on their annual reports, but aren't really able to activate on it and see progress. And we really wanted to avoid being part of that statistic. So we really needed to be deliberate about how we were going to take action on this and not have this just be words on a page, but actually um, see, see it through in terms of um, progress on an annual basis. So we have been on this journey, like I said, for about two years. And what I'm gonna share with you are three key learnings from this experience. The first learning is that it is a journey 
and not an endpoint. So if you don't want to, or if you don't want to be alone on that journey, one of the best practices out, practices out there is to make sure that you're bringing people along with you on that journey. Um, and so one of the key aspects of this is that you want to create the mechanisms for people to actually care about the ESG scorecard in your company. Um, and that's sometimes hard to do when there's noise, when there's other priorities, and when there's so many other things going on um, in your organization. So how do you actually establish those mechanisms for people to care? Well, at Avanade, what we ended up doing as a starting point was to make sure that elements of our ESG scorecard were actually integrated into our corporate scorecard. The company scorecard is something that um, our executives care about, our employees care about, because in a lot of ways they are metric on it. They are promoted based on whether or not they can meet those measures or not. And so we wanted to make sure that the key elements of our ESG scorecard were actually represented there so that people would care um, this particular year, if you know what I mean, right? A lot of times ESGs can be thought of as, you know, uh, a decades long uh, um, opportunity or aspiration. We didn't want it just to be an aspiration. We wanted people to actually start taking action on it now. So that was one of the things that we did. In addition to that, um, we worked the sort of the responsible business behaviors into our executive um, values and, and principles. And we've asked our executive population and our organization to actually role model those responsible business behaviors, not just through their leadership style, but actually with their teams as well. So their teams can then continue the ripple effects of that behavior um, with, their, with, their, with their respective teams. And so finding ways to integrate it into corporate strategy and integrate it into your organizational leadership style is one of the key things that has helped us on this particular journey. The second learning that we have is ESG um, factors can be activated on more when it is a built-in versus a bolt-on into your business transformation process. It is way too easy to consider this work discretionary. It is way too easy to consider this work something that you will tackle three years down the line five years down the line, and therefore you don't take action now. And so what that meant for us as a business was to figure out how do we actually integrate and bolt in aspects of sustainability into our day-to-day -day business practices. So for me personally, one of the things I'm responsible for is our sustainability go-to-market. And to that end, um, we are being very deliberate about incorporating sustainability into the services and offerings and capabilities that we provide for our respective clients. Um, it's a principle called sustainability by design, um, and it's something that we're really trying to uh, embrace and harness. And why that benefits us is because there's actually a statistic out there um, done by Accenture and by the UN Global Compact that says that 75% um, of CEOs out there believe that um, sustainability challenges will be tackled by their digital investments. Well, the thing is, Avanade, we know digital, we know this technology, we know the technology inside and out. So it makes sense for us to include sustainability principles into the things that we're actually developing from a services and capabilities perspective for our clients. So that's an example of what I mean for built, build in versus bolt on. So the takeaway for, for you is, whatever industry that you might be in, whatever you know, whatever sort of remit your company has, figure out ways to actually weave sustainability into the fabric of what your company is already doing to be able to make it real versus discretionary. The third key learning here is actually one of my favorite learnings is that um, it's to empower the change makers. And the great thing here is Responsible business and sustainability are topics that are of interest to 
a lot of people in your organization. I promise you that whether they are executives or new entrants into the workforce, there are a lot of people who are very, very passionate about this space. And so organizations and leaders of organizations really should be looking to find ways to create the forums for these individuals to be able to raise their hand and do something about this so that you can actually take action towards your goals. And so what we did um, from an Avanade perspective was actually treated this as a change management moment. And what I mean by that is when you think about change management and the, 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 the various categories or steps of change management, first is awareness, right? So we really needed to make our employees aware of the scorecard and aware of our responsible business trajectory. And of course, we incorporated into our usual communication mechanisms, but we wanted to find other creative ways to be able to get the word out as well. So one thing that we have within our organization is a big learning, interactive learning event called Innovate Fest. And last year's Innovate Fest was around the theme of responsible business and sustainability. And that was an opportunity for us to almost create modularized master classes of what this is, what it means to us as a business, what are we doing specifically with our clients, um, and even the basics. What's an ESG scorecard? What are the UN Sustainable Development Goals? But there are like sustainability 101 things that a lot of um, people and organizations are not aware of, but if they were made aware of it and made aware of the importance, they can again, join you on the journey. So the first step was awareness. The second step after that, of course, is actually taking action and mobilizing. So one of the things we did post that event of Innovate Fest where sustainability was the theme was actually activated sustainability squads. And what that meant was um, really basically saying, here are some problems to be solved um, from a societal perspective. Here are problems to be solved from a environment perspective. What can we as an organization do to help? And really had people kind of raise their hand and offer their skill sets to be able to solve those problems. And it didn't matter. You could have been a software engineer, you could have been in analytics, you could have been in design, you could have been in strategy, you could have been in marketing, finance, HR. It really didn't matter. We wanted to really harness the passion that people had around this and bring cross-functional pods together to really um, make and create um, something that we could essentially eventually turn into an asset for ourselves, either to use within our organization or to sell to, to our clients. So action was important. And then amplification through creating some sort of flywheel effect is also important. So I actually deliberately chose this graphic because I liked the idea of the pinwheels um, creating that flywheel effect. So what I mean by that is in our ESG scorecard, we have a number of different variables. One of them is around increasing our volunteer hours amongst our employees. Another one is around um, driving regionalized, localized environmental activities, for instance. And so there was a great example just last year where our Netherlands team actually mobilized a group of volunteers to actually go um, volunteer for a beach cleanup. So that, for lack of a better word, helped us to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, irony is not lost on me that I'm using that analogy in the sustainability conversation, but it is apropos because we were able to boost our volunteer hours in that particular region, but we also activated on an environmental event. So that's what I meant by really trying to find ways to create a flywheel effect with that ESG scorecard and the activities that are required for that as well. And of course, celebrate the successes, right? Um, we have um, great stories that pop up across all of our different regions and connecting the dots, sharing the best practices and celebrating those stories is really critical as well to keep the momentum going. So those are the three key learnings that we got from this. I would say in terms of key takeaways, there's a couple of things. As a leader, make sure that you create the forums for your employees to really get involved in the ESG process, right? Um, you've got global objectives, 
right? Now you want to find ways and create forums to action on those global objectives from a local perspective. So make sure that those bridges are built and that you've got champions, change makers um, in the different locations to be able to help you activate on that. As an individual contributor,